I completely screwed up the after repair value. I was off by $50,000. Hello, and thank you for logging on to our Facebook page or also our YouTube. If you're liking our content here at Pine Financial Group, please be sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to both of our channels. I'm Maya Brown, and of course, this man needs no introduction. This is Justin Cooper, one of our senior loan officers. And, you know, we're not here to just talk about the good things that happen in a fix and flip, like making hundreds of thousands of dollars like we all think we're going to. There are a lot of mistakes that happen. And I know, Justin, even though you had a lot of success in this business, you can't have a lot of success without also having mistakes. Yeah, Tell absolutely. me one about them. So um, on my first deal, I probably made all the mistakes, Maya. Um, I made so many mistakes on that first deal, and that was back in 2007 and 2008. And I've relived that story countless times talking to people. So I've actually put together a whole presentation on all the things I screwed up so that hopefully they can't make the same mistakes or don't repeat what I've done. But to sum it up, there were five big ones. Um, first one was the ARV. I completely screwed up the after repair value. I was off by $50,000. And this wasn't like a $2 million property where 50 grand can get absorbed pretty quickly. I thought the property was gonna be worth 212,000. Oh. I actually sold it for 165. So huge mistake there. If I hadn't messed that one up, everything else, all the other mistakes probably could have been absorbed and I still would have made a couple bucks. But ARV probably the single most important number in all of real estate investing. Make sure you know what you're doing and you get that ARV correct. The second thing is your scope of work. Probably the second most <laughs> important number in real estate investing. Um, I basically didn't even have a scope of work. I walked the house. I knew I needed to touch everything, but I didn't write it down and I certainly didn't assign any numbers to it. So going into the project, I didn't know how much money I was going to spend. So on day one, what do you think I did? Went over budget, right? Definitely was going to spend more money than I had accounted for. The third thing I screwed up was running the numbers, right? If you have a good ARV, you have a good scope of work, you can then use a Mayo formula or a max allowable offer to figure out what you should offer on the property. Turns out I just offered what they were asking mm. and we just kind of rolled the dice. You did make all the mistakes. <laughs> My goodness. Who? So make sure you understand how to analyze a deal. And of course, not just how to analyze the deal and have the formulas, but you got to have good information going into those formulas, which of course I didn't. So the fourth thing I screwed up was having enough cash. So the way I came up with that scope of work was I said, I've got $10,000. That's how much I can spend on the property. Clearly that didn't happen. I wound up spending closer to $24,000 on the property. Um, so, uh, Having enough cash is vitally important. Even if you're working with someone like us at Pine Financial Group, where we can cover 100% of the purchase and 100% of the repairs, there's still gonna be a reason for you to have money and to spend money throughout your project. So making sure you have enough cash is very, very, very important. And then the fifth thing I screwed up was having the wrong team. I had a real estate agent, I had a mortgage lender, I had people around me who all sounded like they knew what they were talking about, but ultimately they didn't have my best interest in mind. Uh, and I was so new and green, I didn't know what I needed out of them. So I chose the wrong team. They weren't looking out for my best interests. And then of course that contributed to all those other things that I screwed up. So make sure you do your diligence on your ARV. You put together a good scope of work. You have a couple bucks in the bank and you actually analyze your deal. It sounds so rudimentary, but I definitely screwed them up. And I see people doing, making these same mistakes all the time. Well, you know, kudos to you for staying in the business because it seems to me like after all of those mistakes, you've been ready to call it quits. What made you continue? Uh, well, it was one of those where I, I got through the whole project. I got it sold. And over the course of the project, I was realizing all the mistakes I made, but I wasn't going to quit. I was going to get through the project. And doing that, I really fell in love with the process of it. And I was realizing my mistakes. I was realizing how I could do it better. And so I knew that on the next deal, I could do it better. Maybe not right, maybe not super profitable, but I could do better. Um, I did sit on the sidelines for about three years before I bought my next property because I was so scared. I had lost so much money, but I really fell in love with the process. and I saw the potential that could come from real estate investing. Well, as I mentioned before, sometimes those great successes don't come without a few mistakes along the way. Thank you for being so candid and sharing that with us. And, uh, hopefully keeping someone else from making some of the same mistakes. And we appreciate you logging onto our YouTube channel. Please hit like and subscribe, and you can always find us on pinefinancialgroup.com.